You're the embedded world of Lenovo, and uh, who are you? I'm Matthew Luck. I'm the director of the IoT and embedded group for Lenaro. So this is Light. Light, or for short. The Light group. And there's yes. lots of companies. Uh, it is a very active area at Lenaro. Very active. We have uh, 10 members currently, including NXP, whose booth we're at today. And uh, uh, everybody's in a rush to get IoT work with security and everything. Yes, one of the biggest problems in connecting all these devices to the cloud or the internet is making sure that they're secure so no one can hack them and get it, your personal data or cause problems with, uh, with the device. So one of the platforms that are being worked on right now is a Zephyr, right? And uh, maybe you can uh, introduce? Yeah, so Zephyr is a real-time operating system hosted by the Linux Foundation, of which Lenaro is a member, as well as NXP. And Maureen here is one of the maintainers of the ARM subsystem of Zephyr. Hello, so who are you? Hi, uh, my name is Maureen Helm. I'm a software developer at NXP. And uh, you are the main, uh, maintainer of the Zephyr yes. area? Yes, I'm one of the maintainers working on the Zephyr project, um, we're, you know, focusing on support for NXP devices. So there's a lot of activity with Zephyr right now. Uh... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we've seen a lot of activity in the community, adding support for new SOCs, new boards, new devices. And what is special about Zephyr? Is that the right way to do security? Or... So I think what's special about Zephyr is the open source development model. Um, I think the fact that anybody in the community can contribute code and, and take a look at patches, review patches, comment on them. Um, you know, I, I think that's something that's really special about Zephyr. Is it an RTOS? It is an RTOS, yes. And uh, there's lots of RTOS in, in the world. How, how, do, how, do you, how do people choose Zephyr? Oh, how do people choose? <laughs> well, so Zephyr is a flat memory model RTOS, and one of the nice things about it, in addition to the community aspect, is that uh, there's no legacy implementation of security or some of these other important features to make sure it's secure. So we are starting from a blank slate, designing for the next generation of devices that are connecting to the internet. So it's very, very exciting. So working for the next gen. So right now it's running, a, here you have a demo on a Cortex-M4, but you're talking about the Cortex-M33? Or is that what it's working well, towards? And what I mean by next generation of devices is the actual in products that people are developing, which are going to be the Cortex M4s today. That's going to that's going to last for a while, and then ARM has new cores coming out that make it even easier in the hardware to make sure that these devices are secure. So it's been a, a year or so, or a little bit more, that uh, Lenaro is uh, involved in the lights, right? Uh, Lenaro has only been involved for what we had like eight months. Uh, the Zephyr project's been around for over a year now. Uh, NXP was one of the founding members of it. Uh, many of the uh, NAR engineers, they, they volunteered to come over from what they were doing in Cortex-A uh, and uh, v, uh, V8 to do V8M and stuff, because yeah. a lot it's of an the, exciting place. Exactly. A lot of the developers are coming from the Linux side of things, are working on Cortex-A uh, and being very familiar with working upstream in the Linux kernel, and we're bringing that to the RTOS world in Zephyr. What, what, where did you come from? What are you doing before Zephyr? So, um, I was working on uh, general software for enablement for Kinetis and LPC devices, and so um, kind of creating a common enablement strategy. So that means you know SIMSA support, uh, peripheral drivers, and things like that. And uh, how do you choose what gets in, what doesn't get in? Because that's your job, right? What gets in the Zephyr and what doesn't get in the yeah. Zephyr? Um, it, it's a combination of things. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely doing a lot of code reviews, and so you know, it's pretty rigorous reviews. Um, you know, from a maintainership model. You have to look at all the code. Yeah, we have to look at all the code, and you know, we, we have a, a lot of people in the community that are looking at it as well. And so, um, you know, we have experts from the various ARM vendors, uh, not just in XP, um, but within the Lenaro group that are also looking at it. Is there a lot of code, or is it not? It's supposed to be very complex. That's the whole point, right? So, is it like uh, as a, as small as possible? That's part it, of it. It is as small as possible. However. To get these advanced features like connectivity and security and something small is actually very hard. So the code ends up being, I would say, almost more complicated in some senses. And as well as the, the volume of code, there's tons of features to put in there. So configurable, it still stays very small. But you have the options to choose these different features. So it's like uh, crazy advanced algorithms you need to put in there? 
to make um, things work? No, I don't think I'd say that. I, I think that the, it, there's a lot of configurability in the sense of what SOCs are we working on. And so you're not going to use everything for a particular device, right? So you have you know an NXP device, and there's a subset of what we use in the in the Zephyr uh, kernel that, that runs on our device. But if you switch to another vendor's device, you know the, 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 the configura configurability aspect of it um, really helps. So are you able to run Zephyr on uh, this little thing? Um, what is this? This is. A, Can you hold this? Oh, th this actually is not running Zephyr. No, okay. But as a hot, uh, it says BLE heart rate monitor yeah, Zephyr. Yes. That is. It's one of those. No, this actually goes over here. So sorry okay. about that. And this is the MCU stuff. So yeah. So Zephyr is Zephyr's running on this device. Yeah. Um, this is a uh, Kinetis K64 F, which is a Vortex M4. Um, that's running the Zephyr Bluetooth host stack with a peripheral heart rate sensor profile. It's one of the, the uh, out-of-the-box sample applications that you can download the Zephyr, and so you can get started with this today. Um, you know, I'm not doing any kind of magic for the demo. This is a very popular uh, development kit from uh, NXP. So you so, yeah, Well, Exeware is a relatively new uh, development kit that, that, that it's actually uh, with a partner uh, called Microelectronica, um, but but it, it fits really well into what Zephyr is trying to attain. The fact that there's support for a lot of different sensors built into the device, and so we have you know accelerometers, gyroscopes. Um, so you know we're talking about Internet of Things um, and sensor support. Um, and, you know it makes it for a really great development platform. Nice. So it's going to work out. The Zephyr is going to be great, and uh, the Linear Light. Yeah. Is it nice to work with the Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, activity. A lot of work. There's a ton of work to do. We're going to be working for quite a while on this, on this project. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, should we uh, just walk around here the hall a little bit? Okay. Because uh, you said there was 10 members. Uh, so there's NXP. What kind of other members do you have in the light group? ST is one. ST right there. So uh, they also have stuff going on with that. No Pot potentially, yeah. yeah. And uh, um, so the embedded world is what you're working in. Embedded world is what we work in, and you know our our goal is to bring the embedded into this this next generation. That's what IoT is always about. The embedded's been around for a while, and IoT is really taking the embedded world and connecting it to the cloud. There's a Cortex M23, M33. Uh, are those going to bring you even more stuff to do? Yes, there's uh, some very advanced features, especially related to how you manage. Um, memory, so you can isolate tasks from each other. Uh, it, what we're working on is the an idea of bringing the container concept from Linux to the microcontrollers, and we're calling it microcontainers. Microcontainers. So you want to be able to isolate your connectivity stack from the cloud. Uh, so if you have a cloud application that's downloads some algorithm into your into your microcontroller to do something, or even a Cortex A device, then uh, you don't want if there's a bug in that, you don't want it affecting into your RF. Configura configurations in your RF stack. Uh, you want to keep them completely isolated from each other and only allow them to talk when they've been allowed to. And so there needs to be security in those microcontainers. Yes. It's not RPM or something like that, small packages. And uh, there's right, it's people not... are doing it in different ways. Right? There's a, a Ubuntu Core is doing it in one way with a, a Snapcraft. And they're also a member, right? Ubuntu is also a member. A big thing about what we're doing in the in light is a kind of end to end. So you, you can't just talk about the device. You also have to do the gateway, and the gateway is going to be running distros like Red Hat and uh, Canonical, who are members of the IoT and embedded group at Lenaro. Because they need to talk the same language. Need to be able to securely talk to each other. They, the devices need to be able, be able to authenticate to the to the gateway, which then authenticates to the cloud. They need to be able to send data back and forth. You may have intermittent connections between the devices that are not always on and the gateway, so they need to be able to cache data and then send it up into the into, into cloud. And the Opti is a big part of this? Opti open on the gateway is going to be a big portal. part of this, this story, definitely. It's the you know, We're going to have containers on the gateway, on the Cortex-A Linux stuff. We're going to have micro containers on the RTOS in the in the devices. And of course, you've got the whole cloud container. So it's this kind of end-to-end -end idea of isolating tasks from each other to ensure the secure, security of the device. It sounds really awesome. It's like, pretty cool uh, stuff. It sounds like cool stuff. Yeah. And it's, uh, even though people have been working in better world for decades and decades, this is groundbreaking, uh, what's it called? This is a f exactly. the front of uh, what the future of embedded is going to be. I exactly. That's really what's exciting and new about this. As you said, the embedded world has been around for a long, long time. You know, doing stuff on microcontrollers is not new. 
you know, doing stuff with Linux on these kind of uh, embedded devices is not new. What's new is tying them all together, like like we just oh, talked about. Oh, that's been around for decades. Has it been secure? It, well, it's never really been connected to the to the internet or to a cloud. It's doing kind of isolated tasks that's in, has no connectivity. It's really bringing that connectivity piece that's changing the, the yeah, whole market. Talking about that. And I guess ARM is counting a lot on you to get this right, too, because they, re they need your stuff when the chips are ready for the M33 and M23. Which is really a big part of the solution. It, it, yes, and that's really the point of Lenaro is making sure that the software is ready for the ARM ecosystem in general as new technology comes out. So that's exactly what we're doing. At this show, I saw the first uh, chip at the ARM booth. It was an R M23. The 23, right. So something is out already, and uh, I, I guess all these guys are. These guys are in a race right now to get the 33, 23 out. It's going to be a bunch of solutions coming out. Oh, yeah. And they're going to have a trust zone on the Cortex M. Exactly. And I think we'll see a lot of that uh, in next year's embedded world. It's going to be very different than this the year's. One? And the, there's going to be an uptake in the open source security systems. So they, they will be very much counting on the OPT to be perfect solution. That's right. And you can see the start of it even in this one. There's a Riot, uh, Riot OS is here with a booth. Uh, and there's a few other open source art tosses that are here. So cool. you've seen the uptick 